Last season we did several segments on hydroponics and we had a lot of interest and today we're going to look at a very small scale hydroponic system that you can do in your own home or in this particular case in a classroom. Joining me today is Dr. Shelley Mitchell and she is an extension specialist here in the horticulture department but she works a lot with the youth development and 4-H and teachers and so you've come up with a clever way to do this for classrooms also. Can you tell us what we've got set up here? Well, I wanted to do hydroponics because a lot of teachers want to grow stuff in the classroom, but they, they can't usually grow it too well outside because the growing season, of course, is in the middle between school years. Mm -hmm. And so keeping it inside would prevent a lot of the bugs and also it would be right there, so it would be quick to get to the actual area of teaching. All right, so I set up some hydroponics because you can grow stuff like herbs, you know, basil, cilantro, stuff like mm -hmm. that, in them pretty easily. So I wanted to show that it doesn't take a highly technical system to grow in the classroom. So I bought one online. This is like an $80 setup. So this is a kit this and it is comes a kit. with all the supplies. Yeah, it comes with everything you see here. Okay, so a teacher could buy that if they wanted to spend $80. Yeah. Or? Or this, a lot of classrooms have old aquariums and a lot of times they're just sitting around, nothing's really growing in them or not, they're not using them for fish or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I took an old aquarium with the old pump, the old air stone, and actually I used some aquarium gravel. I tried different media in here, and so one of the ones I picked was aquarium gravel, because if you have an old aquarium, you probably have aquarium old gravel. gravel. Right. And so basically this costs nothing. Okay, so this is just made off of old aquarium supplies. Old aquarium supplies, and this is a piece of styrofoam out of a, of a package I got, and then I just cut holes in it, and these are just, these are just little cups that you would drink out of. Oh yeah. All right, so I poked holes in the bottom and then they're floating, they're floating in that. And so I tried different, different media in case, you know, cause some people, like if they have animals, they have easy access to like rice holes. I tried some rice holes. If they like to garden, they might have access to perlite, those little white styrofoam looking pellets. So I put some in there and then I used, one, I used aquarium gravel and then I also used coconut core, which is the inside of a coconut. Just to see, you know, because some people have reptiles in the classroom and so they'd have access to that. So I just tried things that I thought people would have access to. Nothing fancy, just stuff they'd have access to. Now the kit is growing in rock wool, which you know how they make cotton candy from sugar by spinning it? Mm -hmm. Basically they take rocks, they heat them up, and they spin it and you get rock wool. Okay. So that's what came in the fancy kit. So really the media is just to hold the plant and mm -hmm. anchor it in place and give the roots a space to grow. Exactly. So it seems that your media did just as well as the rock wool did. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we can use any of those. And now you mentioned the air stones. Obviously plant roots need air. Yep. Yeah, just like, just like if they sit in, if you have a puddle in your backyard, whatever's in it might drown. Same thing here. So they can be in water, they just have to have air added. So that's what the air stones are doing. Okay. The first time I did this, I just put them in water uh -huh. and they didn't grow very big. And so then I did a little bit of research by looking at some fact sheets that OSU had produced. And I realized there's two things you got to think about. You got to think about the pH of the water and you got to think about how much fertilizer do you add. Okay. So how do we determine that? Well, the pH of the tap water that I took using one of these little, you can get these little, they're little pH and EC meters. You can get them online, you can get them at garden centers. And basically it's set on pH. So I just stick it in the water and the pH, according to the fact sheet here, this is basil that we're growing. So according to this fact sheet, basil needs five and a half to six for a pH. Okay. So now, if, right it, there. if it needed to be adjusted, they make stuff called pH down, and it's like phosphoric acid to help lower the pH. I tried being inexpensive and using lemon juice, mm -hmm. and it lasted for a little bit, but it kept coming back up. So I had to actually go with like a pH down, which I think is phosphoric acid, mm -hmm. but you can get a whole bunch, a gallon's like 10 bucks. So really a hydroponic system is kind of like a swimming pool yeah. or a water garden where you've got to regulate some of the, the pH and also the amount of salt and fertilizer that might be in there. Well, now the amount of salt and f the amount of salt, which is in the fertilizer is known as electrical conductivity. And I'm just going to switch this. We measure this one measures it in micro siemens. Okay. 
all right? And so according to this, in millisiemens, basal needs 1 to 1.6. So I'll put it in here, and it's at 1742. So millisiemens, that would be like 1.7. So that's a little bit high. Okay. Now what I can do to reduce that is just add water. Because that'll dilute the amount yeah. of fertilizer that's in there. I can just add water, and if it if it gets too low, then I can just add more fertilizer. And with an aquarium, we've got plenty of room to work with, so I'm not worried about that too much. Now, this might sound a little technical, but with all of this ECPH stuff, but really, you just need to monitor your two numbers, and mm -hmm. you're doing that with that little meter right there. Yeah, it just takes a couple minutes a day. And why would a teacher want to do this in a classroom? What really is the benefits for the students to learn about? Well. One, a lot of kids have no idea where their food comes from. Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of agricultural illiteracy. And I mean, I've had kids come up to me and, and look at beans and go, hey, those are pretty rocks. I mean, seriously, they don't know where their food comes from. So that is, this is, they can eat these. They could make a little pesto in the classroom. And also, when you teach plant science, you know, you got to have some plants to look at. So you can monitor, like, how much water they're breathing out. You can monitor how much photosynthesis is going on, you know, and if you're teaching little kids, you can just see, look, we plant seeds and they grow. And if, I just started these with seeds. And even if your classroom doesn't have a window, you've got some grow lights above it um, that you can easily buy at some of the big box stores and things like that. Exactly. I've had a lot of teachers say they want to they want to use plants or gardens in the classroom, but they don't have the space, which just doesn't take up much. They don't have the money, which is why I tried to keep it cheap. They don't have the... Um, time so if it's right in the classroom you don't have to have travel time to the garden and you can also grow it year round so you're not trying to get out there in march and try to get something to grow before school year ends so one last thing where could a teacher go for more resource um this fact sheet and and you mentioned yeah that fact sheet's a good a good start and then of course you know you can look up stuff online if you want to you can buy those ready-made kits. Mm -hmm. But really, if you just monitor the pH and the EC according to what the fact sheet says, depending on your crop, I mean, if I can do it, because <laughs> I don't have that much of a green thumb, so if I can do it, anybody can do it. Excellent. Thank you for sharing with us, Shelly. You're welcome. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussions.